Grammar Film Productions presents Hello and welcome to the album man and today I'm going to be doing a review of Caravan's seminal album The Land of Grey and Pink which was released in 1971 on the Decca label. And for those of you who don't know, I'll give you a bit of background about Caravan. They are part of the legendary, well, certainly in my opinion, Canterbury scene um, from the late 60s and early 70s, which gave birth to other artists such as Soft Machine and Camel and Matching Mile. And this band was formed in 1968, and this is their third album. And in my and many fans' opinion, they're the magnum opus of their long discography and a classic of the progressive rock genre. The members on this album are Pi Hastings on vocals and guitar, David Sinclair on keyboards, organ and mellotron, Richard Sinclair on bass, and Richard Coglin on drums. And the album starts with Golf Girl, which was originally titled Group Girl, and this starts with some trombone from Paul Beachman, and it sets the folk prog tone of the song. It then goes to the classic folk-inspired caravan sound with a strong drum beat, some simple guitar chords and prominent mellotron. And this folky prog sound is almost reminiscent of Jeff at all, to be honest. And it's what I love about the band. I also love the fact that they really do not take themselves too seriously. This song in particular highlights the whimsical nature of Caravan's lyrics, as they are simply about how the bassist Richard Sinclair found his wife on a golf course, apparently. And it's beautifully phrased in just such a quintessentially English way that you can't help but love it really. I mean it even mentions frippances, you can't get more Eng much more English than that. And what really makes this song note is the vocal delivered by the dreamy, almost ethereal voiced Pi, whose soft tones, not too dissimilar of Andrew Latimer from fellow Canterbury band Camel, carry the song. His voice sounds like it was created purely for this type of music. And as the song reaches the end, Caravan really shows a taste of their skills and musicians, primarily the skill of the keyboardist David Sinclair, whose short Mellotron solo really gets you prepared for the more self-indulgent solos later on. But what really stands out in the finale is the piccolo played by Pi's brother Jimmy, who isn't a permanent member of the band, he just appears on a couple of songs, and damn he can play some mean piccolo. Anyway, this song really sets a tone, grabs you in for a longer, proggier winter wine. And this had the great working title of Likely to Have a Name Next Week, and it's a song of fairy tales and dreams, and written by the bassist Richard Sinclair. In fact, I think it was actually sung by Richard Sinclair instead of Pi, as most of the songs are. And this song, as I said, it's a bit prog, it comes in a, a, about seven and a half minutes. And it starts with some lovely acoustic guitar before the vocals come in. The lyrics again in phrased in such a way that can only be present in the early 70s. And why people don't still phrase lyrics like that, it baffles me, because it just sounds so good. And Caravan, I mean, their songs tend to have a heavy you know, keyboard-driven sound to it. However, the bass by Richard pinning it is just so good. I mean, he really is a fabulous bassist. And the solo on this from David on keyboards is an absolute musical spectacle. Yet the best is very much still to come. He really shows on this song, though, why still he should be rated as highly as people like Richard Wright and Peter Bardens and Rick Wakeman. Uh, he plays with such soul and passion and uses such a colourful variety of sounds. And then after this delightful prog song, we get more of a pop song, which is Love To Love it. and Tonight Pigs Will Fly. And this song, it's only three minutes in length, and starts with such a catchy hook on guitar that you know this is going to be an exceptionally catchy, almost Beatles-esque song, which quite frankly it is. I wonder how this song did chart when it was released as a single, as it has all the elements of a successful pop song in, from the, you know, early 70s, that, you know, type of thing. And personally, I find this song to be addictingly catchy, and something you can just play on loop forever without getting sick of it. And the lyrics of, you know, love to love you, and pigs will fly, it's just really, um, English, to be honest, and very caravan. 
And then we get their most famous track, the title track in the land of grey and pink. And this blows all the songs we've had previously out of the water. It starts with a fairly simplistic chord progression, but and then there's a great simplistic driving beat. I mean, this isn't a particularly intricate song, it's no prog epic. But what makes it so magical is Part of it is the way that Pi delivers the beautifully charming lyrics about finding drugs on an island and taking them, quite honestly. It really is the ultimate stoner song. It was written about and for them. Um, it's one of those songs you could quite confidently say was written on drugs, I would say. But the real achievement of this song is just the way they capture musical beauty. And of course this is helped along by more of David's phenomenal keyboards when he has a little solo spot. But every line in this song is just catchy. There really is no set chorus I'd say, but you don't feel you need one. It's a folk prog masterpiece that should be the best song on the album. I mean this is the first song of theirs I had and I thought surely they can't beat this. This is incredible. However, with the last and final song, Caravan, Find A Way. And the last song is Nine Feet Underground. This is a fan favourite that took up the entirety of side two on the vinyl release, as it comes in at an epic 20 minutes in length. Which means, of course, we can expect a prog epic. And they deliver, creating one of the best progressive rock songs of the 70s, that beats Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Carnival 9, Yes is Close to the Edge, and Genesis is Supper's Ready, in my opinion at least. And this song it is quite hard one to review, particularly because of its length, and while I won't go into detail about every movement on this song, I have to tell you their names, as they are quite simply marvellous. It's first Nigel Blows a Tune, then Love's a Friend, then Make It 76, then Dance of the Seven Paper Hankies, Hold Grandad by the Nose, Honest I Did, Disassociation, and 100% Proof. I mean, now most of these movements aren't instrumental, to primarily an instrumental song, but unlike their previous attempts as an epic, which was for Richard from the If I Could Do It All Again, If I Could Do It Again, I'd Do It All Over You album, um, and which was their previous release. This song does have lyrics, which I always like in my prog epic, certainly the ones I listed before, they all have lyrics, and I do like that. I find a 20 minute instrumental can get a little tedious. But this song still really shines instrumentally from Conklin's solid rock beat to Richard's jazz infused bass playing to some solid guitar from Pi, including some lead playing for once. But I mean, Pi really is no Dave Gilmore, he's quite a limited guitarist. However, the thing that really stands out about this song is the man I've been praising the entire time, which is the unbelievably talented David Sinclair, whose organs, keyboards and Mellotron not only drive the song when the vocals are present, but make the song the classic it is with his solos. Some could call this song extremely self-indulgent to almost the levels of Robert Fripp of King Crimson, and yeah, the whole song is pretty much. It's keyboard noodling rankery as some people may call it, but personally, I love that type of thing. If you love pretentious keyboard noodling driven 20 minute prog songs, then you like this but it's definitely not to everybody's taste. If you're a fan of Emerson, Lake and Palmer, especially I think you like this song, um, it does remind me quite a bit of something like Carnival 9, because of the big um, keyboard elements, I'd say. And it, with this song's change of pace and direction, the aggressive mellotron, the melodic organs and symphonic piano, combined with the wit caravan have of their lyrics, this song truly is a spectacle, a roller coaster ride that takes you up and down and something not to be missed. Overall, the genius of this album is its blend of accessible folk prog songs like the title track and Golf Girl and Love to Love You, but there's still something for the die-hard prog fans with nine feet underground. In my opinion, it's the best thing to come from the Canterbury scene, better than anything from Soft Machine, Camel or Egg, anything they managed to achieve, and this remains a classic and caravan seminal album. It may not be to everybody's taste, but the Canterbury scene was never aimed at the mainstream anyway. This album, it gets a 9.5 out of 10 from me, and there's something for everybody, and I definitely recommend it. I mean, it's sonic good. This has been the Man. Thank you for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and as usual, long live rock and roll.